or good day. It's uh, Adil Fazal, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the U.S. markets for Wednesday's trading session, the 1st of February 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. Download the uh, latest app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so we have a reversal on our hands here, folks. Uh, overnight, the uh, Apple earnings certainly have triggered a potential uh, round of risk aversion. Also, with regards to Mr. Trump's rhetoric on uh, legislation or reducing uh, red tape in terms of uh, the pharmaceutical sector, okay, uh, and also uh, him talking up his uh, tax policy again, whether or not that will have the effect. Initially, the market sold off uh, quite viciously on the immigration ban, and it certainly seems that they've rebounded overnight, uh, especially with Chinese data as well coming on the stronger side and European data on the stronger side as well. Now, let's see how long that uh, actual rally can last. Okay, in terms of um, the actual uh, technical setup, let's start and let's start to decipher. Okay, in terms of the uh, Dow Jones Transportation Index, I have actually highlighted here um, the fact that uh, the weekly chart certainly seems to have topped out here. Also, with regards to a uh, potential report that the uh, tax policies will not be implemented until 2018, again, it certainly seems like everything's baked into this market. We certainly have a double top intraday on the Dow transportation average and that that should all that from a trading perspective that's all i really need to know okay a double top equals a market top okay and therefore looking for uh, bias to be bearish from there on in in terms of the dow 30 let's just see exactly where we stand starting with the daily chart dow 30 the breakout and then obviously you had the fake out the fake out obviously triggered due to the uh, double top in the dow transports you are looking at potential support around this uh, 19700 level so watch out for that we did actually get the, get below there briefly before we actually started the potential rebound. So just be wary of that, okay? Any weakness, again, uh, certainly will continue from my perspective, given the fact that uh, you are looking at uh, uh, the uh, double top on the Dow Transport. So unless that double double top is taken out, then obviously I'll revert to my bearish bias on US indices. Until then, I'll maintain my bearish bias, okay? Very simple. Okay, let's look at the Dow. Um, uh, sorry, we looked at the Dow. Let's look at the actual Russell now. Uh, Russell again has another bearish uh, potential pattern. You have a HS formation on the Russell, okay? You're putting in your left shoulder. You have gap fill above, so again, watch out for gap fill on the Russell, and then you are looking for a potential flush. Going to the daily chart on the Russell. Let's just have a look here, okay? So again, you have this diagonal trend line, certainly holding. The ultimate aim for the Russell really is gap fill below 130.9, okay? And then obviously you've got multiple gaps below. So HS formation in the lower time frames and daily charts, so you're looking for gap fill uh, below. All at present, you're looking for gap fill, you certainly will be capped at gap fill, uh, and you do have key resistance there, okay? So let's just uh, put the gap level in, okay, and look for risk, risk off once we get there, okay? Given the fact that the Russell certainly is bearish, now let's look at the S&P. Uh, S&P 500, just to confirm, I've actually got a short position open at the uh, 2280 zone, okay, looking for a, a weak uh, uh, bias and looking for a flush lower, okay. Uh, you do have a re fib resistance around the 75% and 200 MA at 2286, so it's better we'll be wary of that. You do have unfill, unfill gap at 2294. Very unlikely that gap will be filled. There's nothing really overtly bullish. You do have a um, uh, unfilled gap below at 22.65. That certainly needs to close below. And obviously, we, we certainly have built a base around the 22.68 zone. So let's just respect that for now on the S&P 500. Going to the 60-minute chart, the S&P, bearing in mind that you have the H&S formation on the Russell. You also have a H&S formation on the S&P 500 as well. Okay, uh, That unfilled gap above must remain open in order for the gap to hold. And we must remain below Fib 75 or 61 percent for the HS formation to continue and uh, flush lower. Again, bear in mind you have support or gap fill at uh, 2240 that needs to close as well. Daily chart the SP 500 again, it was a fake out, uh, obviously, given the fact that we broke above 2280 and then we flushed below and knocked out stops above and below. Okay, uh, next real potential support is 2254 until we get back down to gap fill at 2240. Okay. That's my understanding. Oh, the uh, actual sell-off as well was on, on, on stronger volume, so again, bear that in mind. In terms of the NASDAQ now, let's move on to the NASDAQ. Actually, before we do, let's just go back to the, the actual uh, VIX, folks. VIX is very, very important here. That gives us an insight and uh, cross-reference our potential analysis as well. Okay, so the, the VIX here on the 10-minute chart. Let's just go to a daily first of all. Let's look at the bird's eye view. Okay, so bird's eye view from my perspective, certainly showing some signs of life. 
uh, did uh, is actually attempting to reverse here and uh, we certainly will need to see further evidence of that on the daily chart although the uh, candles at present certainly are interesting okay the uh, 60 minute chart at the moment you do have a previous resistance equal support if the market continues to flush and you have gap fill and going back down to double bottom now double bottom that's exactly where i will certainly turn very very bearish at this moment in time from my perspective certainly looking for bearish price action hence the reason why um, i've gone short on the s p uh, given the fact that the vix is now potentially into support so again looking for bearish bias in terms of the nasdaq let's bring up the nasdaq daily chart okay we actually breached the key trade diagonal trend line so therefore looking for weakness in the daily chart also increased volume as well on the sell side uh, the uh, na the Apple, obviously Apple earnings certainly have helped the Nasdaq. Uh, if I would known the earnings, I'd obviously uh, act accordingly. I didn't. I got stopped out. Okay, so uh, again, you are looking at lower lows and lower highs. You have gap fill at 5.168, so be, be wary of that. You have previous support equals resistance in this row zone at 5.148. Okay, so again, just be, be, be mindful of that. So gap fill at 5.130. And then obviously you've got a previous support equals resistance at 5.150, so take that into account. You do have unfilled gap below at 5.066. Again, that's certainly something that you want to be taking into account as well. Which whichever side of the market you're trading, I'm not necessarily saying trade this side. I'm just giving you my opinion, folks. Okay. Uh, in terms of the S, uh, the Nasdaq again for key resistance levels. Obviously we've closed this gap now on back of Apple earnings. You got 200 MA at 5.135. If the market continues its run, then you are looking at resistance at 5150. That's the zone that I'll certainly be looking to show. If obviously the market's euphoric on Apple earnings and we start to continue to rip higher, then you are looking at gap fill above at 5165, 5168. Well, it's very hard to envisage that, especially with the immigration ban and the refugee ban and the Muslim ban and the rhetoric regarding that and the attorney being sacked uh, and so on and so forth. It certainly is chaos out there, okay, especially with Mr. Trump's policies no longer. Uh, being actioned in 2017 if not 2018 okay so from my perspective certainly bearish the uh, IBB or the uh, biotech certainly obviously ripped yesterday on the back of Mr. Trump's uh, rhetoric of uh, reducing uh, red tape etc etc so IBB certainly ripping high as you can see here so you have the Nasdaq to a large extent although initially markets sold off quite viciously let's look at the uh, semiconductors now Bear with me. See if I can find the semiconductors. Be helpful. Also, pro copper, gold, Shanghai, emerging markets, yen, financials. Come on, where are thou? Ah, oh, here we go. Semiconductors. Okay. So semiconductors still remain weak. Okay, even though yesterday's potential uh, pop in IBB you are still looking at uh, risk off for semiconductors we did actually close the gap below looking for this bearish channel to break now on the back of Mr. Trump's antics and uh, uh, insanity etc etc any pop higher will certainly be met with resistance from my understanding and my interpretation okay even though Apple's earnings certainly did come out stellar the rest of their uh, econo uh, rest of their numbers certainly were weak okay uh, a week all around okay so uh, again my battery is actually dying on my, uh, my uh, device, so I better wrap up this video very quickly. Any pop on IB on uh, the semiconductor certainly facing resistance. Once this is into gap fill, I'll be looking for a short bias down to gap fill below. So my bias certainly still remains bearish until we take out, obviously, the highs or the previous high uh, or until the Dow Transports takes out that double top. Okay, on that note, please be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Visit Trade Signal for the latest uh, signals and market updates and also visit CFDs.com. For, to open up and take advantage of the cash bonus offer. Goodbye.